Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. Today we're taking a closer look at a couple of George Hicks builds, um, which have been part of our home front bricks uh, theme in the past. Both of these minifigs designed by Slam, so we're going to have him in here in a little bit to talk not only about those, but about some of the printing as well. But we don't get George in studio very often, right. uh, so we wanted to have a time here to be able to go through a couple of these builds because they're very unique, they're very colorful, um, and you kind of got it, the project kind of sprung on you a little bit, and, yeah. then, uh, and then clearly what became of it, you know, you made it work. Yeah, say uh, Dan and I were talking back and forth about some ideas for home front bricks and uh, wanted to do something firefighting related. And uh, I'd never heard of a fire track before. Yeah. And uh, he says, well, take a look, see what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. So found some photos. Uh, originally it had planned on being for like forest fighting down in the swamps. But uh, the only reference photos we could find were Canadian Defense Forces. Which so, obviously wildfires, it's, yeah. it makes sense that they'd have those. So. Uh, found quite a bit of the detailing like on the back online mm -hmm. but I uh, couldn't get a really close picture of the Canadian Defense Forces logo on uh, on the door there mm -hmm. so thankfully uh, some good Instagram peeps guy by the name of Dylan was uh, able to get me some close-ups of that and it turned out fantastic nice. slam killed the printing on this I'm I'm super excited about the yellow and red or neon green and red on the back mm -hmm. that itself right there it's worth just displaying from the from the rear, so, and uh, Nate was the project manager on this. Did a did a fantastic job bringing it together. So uh, pretty pleased with how it turned out, especially like all the yeah that's tools really on the inside. For those who don't have it, I mean when you're fighting forest fires and any other fire gonna need axes, hammers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of mock ready in that sense yeah, too. If you've same. got, if you've got some, you know what I mean. You can already see how you can get that set up and really have it seem like you know it's it's in action <laughs> or yeah, being same. ready to be put into action. It's a second tracked kit mm -hmm. that I've done. Not my norm. Usually do boats and helicopters, right. obviously. But uh, the force fight and uh, heavy bulldozer kind of has a special place in my heart. I've run a lot of equipment for work. Mm -hmm. D8Rs especially, so I know when uh, we finally posted this, I had some arguments from some operators <laughs> that uh, said... And you're like, I've been that, behind the wheel of this thing. That, that's not a D8R, they don't make them that way, it needs to be smaller. I'm like, nah, here, I'll, I'll send you some photos and uh, tell you exactly see what, what I it see. is. So, but uh, yeah, I was finally pretty happy to get to do a bulldozer. So, I And this one came first, right? Before yeah, this one? Yeah, this okay. was a Black Friday special, sold out that day, I believe. So, and then this was a later in December mm -hmm. pre-order. Yeah, well, and this was definitely a cool kickoff in the sense that this was the first time we had seen really that big splash of red coming back. Obviously, <laughs> the printing is nice on there too, but then just yes. the, the, the timing of it all for having a, a, a large bulldozer hit the web was pretty much was right on. <laughs> yeah, and say, uh, those who know me, red is not a color I tend to work in. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I wasn't very familiar with the parts library mm -hmm. availability in red, but uh, we made everything work. And yes, they slammed, did some awesome printing on everything. And what I'm most proud of is the little engine inside. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah. I guess we could, both sides open. That's awesome. Ah, and then it comes off. But uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure I had an engine in there. Because usually you build something blocky, you don't have right. any room for it's detail. It's solid. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then the interior slam. That whole cab is crazy with the angles and the way it comes together. It looks pretty spacious even for a minifigure. <laughs> yeah, and say this is one of the only bulldozers that actually has a second seat in it. Mm -hmm. Off to the side there, they, uh, they call it a swamper seat. The swamper, I guess, is uh, a guy that rides along with Your the dozer operator kind of, yeah, yeah, sure. and gets out to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Clear that. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting, and then, yeah, I forgot the... Mary and I went back and forth on getting this door to open. Yeah, right. Just right. So and you can swivel that shovel depending on the yeah. where you've got it set, which is really, really cool. And yeah, say the blade is positionable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it on camera because we'll have to edit it for small <laughs> children. So, but, so uh, was was figuring out the parts library and learning what you had at your disposal the initial challenge for yes. for this one? Yeah. Yeah. Say originally, uh, I built a D eight dozer for the U.S. Marine Corps to mm -hmm. use on one of my landing craft. And then I'm like, well, that's pretty much the same thing. And I went back, figured out what colors were available in mm -hmm. red, and then got the six-way positioning blade. Because that's that's not normal for a uh, 
bulldozer of this size, usually on smaller finished dozers, you've got the six-way adjustable blade. Usually on a larger dozer, it's fixed. You can tilt sure. it, and that's about it, mm -hmm. and raise it up and down. But it's not moving necessarily. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not okay. necessarily moving. So, but uh, yeah, that was some of the argument I got from some people. It's like, uh, they don't make six-way mm -hmm. positional blades for larger Interesting. dozers. I'm like, this one they do. <laughs> if if you, you spend the right amount of money, they'll do just about anything. Yeah, I suppose that's so, a good point. And it's it's definitely a specialty order item for the uh, Los Angeles County Fire Department. So and uh, I can't remember they they have a pretty intensive uh, training program for mm -hmm. these guys, and they practice a lot. So not just anybody can go charging off into a forest fire in a bulldozer. Yeah, nonetheless operate the heavy machinery in yeah. those kind of conditions. I mean, that's a, that's even different than being a, a boot on the ground in, in that standpoint, so, so very cool. So then when you when you got your parts library a little bit more figured out for this build, oh, I really like that angling. Yeah. Too. That's awesome, that's a nice little subtle detail. Um, but then when you come to this, this clearly has a little bit less going on, it's more of, more of a box. Did you run into any of those issues when you were like, all right, I know the way I want this to look, but it's gotta look this way in red? Nah, just some of the cab construction here in the front was mm -hmm. a little challenging. Just getting the angles and slopes that I wanted. The, the connection, you've got to use the old uh, boat studs on the bottom mm -hmm. to get everything to hold in there tight. But uh, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, hopefully there's still another variant coming out for home yeah. front bricks this year. Mm -hmm. So that uh, I think everybody will really enjoy because it could be used for anything. Yep. Yeah, I think that home front bricks has definitely become kind of one of those new uh, new themes that people want us to explore more. And obviously, there's a lot of uh, suggestions flying around out there, so we're trying to sort through it and figure out exactly what that lineup looks like. But if you had to start somewhere, yeah, this yeah, is say, a pretty was, good way. This was my first dive into home front bricks. I'm pretty happy with it. So Sweet. we'll uh, we'll see what else comes out. Awesome. I'm pretty excited to see what next year brings. Absolutely. Well, we uh, we got to have Slam in here to talk about the uh, the figures and printing on this, but for now, George, thank you so much for joining us and Good to be here. Uh, let's uh, let's take a little closer look at some minifigures. All this right. Is, well, uh, well, here we are. We've uh, we've got Slam in the studio to talk about the minifigures for the Fire Dozer and the Fire Track. What yeah. do you got, Slam? <laughs> um, well, I'm here with George, who's not normally here, and I'm not normally on camera either, but uh, I got to do all the printing and on the minifigures and on these kits that George built up for us last year. And these are some of my favorite kits. Uh, which one came first? Uh, Fire Dozer was Black Friday special. Oh, it was, right. I actually own this kit. I love this kit. Uh, so I'll jump in and talk about some of the prints here. And like, this is LA County Fire Department. These are very busy firefighters, right? Yes. Probably some of the busiest people in the world. So as um, we talked earlier, they got to go through, I'd say probably up to a six week training program and then practice all the time. And then LA is always on fire. Yes. As we know <laughs> these days. But, uh, but into the prints, uh, we chose, are there, how many of these uh, bulldozers are there? There's like- I think we only did a run of 50. Well, um, uh, oh, in real right life? There's like Ooh. one through four, one through six. Uh, I think six of the larger ones and then the smaller Six and sevens are maybe probably five or six each also. But we chose number two. <laughs> As you can see from the number two here. Um, wait, yep, number two there. Very much a, uh, I like to think of that as a NASCAR emblem. Um, the cab on this is a big old mesh print. And we were, we're talking originally about printing the whole thing with a mesh pattern, which has been awesome, but cost prohibitive. So we did a nice sweet number two in a grid pattern. I love the over under art effect of that. Say so it turned out great and yeah. the, can't forget about that spectacular grill when you get oh, back around to Oh, swing back around to, around to the right front now. and I'm going to tip that up. Hopefully you can see that, but yes, we did a really great front grill, engine grill and the print on that. That turned out really well. I'm that very turned proud out of that fantastic. One. I was uh, really concerned with how that was going to show up on black tile, but uh, nailed but it. Nailed it. It has some nice over under shadow effects. Um, we've got LA County badging on both sides and hand painted lettering in the back. So, just uh, anything on the inside of this one? It's been a uh, while. Yeah. Can you crack it open? You nailed the operator's control panel. Because, in fact, the day that Mary asked for the printing, I just happened to be sitting in a bulldozer like this. Not like this, but similar. And, uh. Oh, right. The <laughs> climate control vents, spot on. Right? <laughs> it's um, uh, most crazy. Of, I mean, I love a good instrument panel, and most days I'm doing 
fighter jets um, or World War II plane instrument panels. So to be able to get sat down with a, here's some good old American AC controls, like with, with the dials and the vents. It's just like, it's such a refreshing change <laughs> from highly complicated uh, aircraft controls. But so uh, you've let me do a couple of instrument panels like that so far. Like simple. simple. I like simple. Straightforward things we're all familiar with. Yep. Yeah. And so, uh, and the only other really interesting print is this uh, drive gear wheel back here, which I pumped a bunch of detail into. So, and and I'm sure that's a pretty hard surface to uh, print on because it's it's domed. It's domed. It's within. Every direction. It's not. Uh, you you can tell when we're we're really stretching our printers because things will fuzz out. Yeah. Um, and we'll get like some focus problems, and this one is totally within our reach. Awesome, it turned out great. Yeah, I'll print on domes all day. Um, yeah, uh, big old droid domes, oof. Yeah, that, that's something that requires a different kind of printer than what we have. Hmm. But. And we also have then minifigure for this dozer, and we have built, so this is a Wildcat firefighter, but in a more, a less protected loadout. Yeah, um, so they're typically in the cab more often, so they don't have to be nearly as fireproof suited up. I mean, and their job is to go and dig a fire break somewhere. It may be closely on fire, but not heavily yeah. on fire. So they probably would not be wearing something heavier than this. But they do have an interesting military style harness. This is a communication harness. And looking through photos, I found different levels of how many pockets and whatnot would be on a harness like this. And this guy seems like he has to be pretty well connected to the rest of his crew. He's yeah. both giving and taking orders. Oh, I'd say so communication is key dealing with a giant wildfire. Absolutely. And you just sent a bulldozer up a hill somewhere. Uh, you want to tell him that he's OK to keep going or better head home <laughs> at his top speed of a mile per hour. Whatever. Right. Yeah, right. So uh, he gets that cool little communication harness front and back. Um, and I, did I badge? Underneath that, I believe it says LA County Fire. So um, he's also got a cool little blue baseball hat uh, with the Canadian Bear logo on it, which I thought was cool. Or not Canadian, California <laughs> Bear logo on it. And we're about to talk about Canadians. Pardon me. Um, and yeah, he's a good little fig. Reflective strips, etc. Very happy the way this turned out. No, so it's, it's a great figure. I really enjoy the uh, the chest rig that you mm -hmm. were talking about. You got quite a bit of detail crammed into such a small little rig. And tiny little Easter egg, it is a slam branded um, chest rig. So you can almost make out the letters for it. I am a fan of slam Easter eggs. Yep, yep. I do them where I can. Cool. And I think that's about it for this big old dozer. Ah, that should sum it up. Yeah, cool. Let's move over to the next kit. The Canadian Fire Track. Canadian Defense Forces Fire Track. Yeah, it was interesting to find out, like doing research for the figure on this, is that uh, the Canadian, they don't have like a DNR style nationwide fire service. Yeah, I think uh, a majority of their stuff like we have, fire department wise and all that is mainly part of the Defense Forces. So yeah. it's an interesting way of doing things. Yep. Canadian Forces have their main firefighters, and then they have the Defense Forces also, which supplements more firefighters to go out in the field. And, and they're all stationed around Canadian bases yeah. up north and whatnot. And they supplement whatever local fire services there might be. So, but they run all the cool let's fight forest, forest fires and tundra fire equipment like this guy. Um, beautiful little weird fire track. <laughs> Like, you could say that again. <laughs> um, and yeah, res doing research on this one like showed me just how many weird tracked vehicles there are in the world. You have a lot of work ahead of you, so things potentially. That, things that are not tanks, but have the, tracks. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, and they're often cute and very sci-fi looking. So, and this one with his tiny plow falls under that category of cute. But this has got some really interesting prints on it. We've got door grills on either side. Um, behind that would be equipment of whatever types. We've got the Canadian uh, Forces logos on the doors. And then the back, 
I kind of went over the top on this. No, nah, you, you nailed it. That's that's the brightest <laughs> UV ink I've ever seen on a on a kit so far, and it and may not be the last. Of all the things I did last year, this is one of the coolest. Um, so super detailed control panel down the center with all sorts of crazy pump controls and outlet valves, and I don't even know what all is going back on back there. I think there's a bunch of instruction plaques. A lot of activity. But I put, it's a pretty good one-to-one -one reproduction of what's on the back of that fire track. And then we have the two indicator panel light strips with the with stripes that match your shirt. And uh, and then we gloss coated those indicator lights too. So. Really makes it pop. I like it when you guys do the uh, clear gloss coat over everything, give it that shine. We don't do it with everything. I mean, most military vehicles Oh, do not require dull. it, yeah. and uh, why would their lights? Their, the, yes. Anyways, it's great for something like this. If we did more fire stuff, we'd be doing that all day long. Um, and we have those window prints on the sides too that are also glossy. So overall, this is a sweet, sweet little vehicle with just a beautiful back end. And it comes with this Canadian Forces firefighter with a great little mustache. He's got his turnout coat and pants and reflective striping um, and a printed printed fire hat. So it's a pretty good little figure. And then, yeah, to uh, put him in the cabin a little easier, switch him out, put his hair piece on. But, uh, yeah, you guys really did a great job on that fig. And I don't know how you managed to get that tiny, tiny little print on the front of that fire it's, at. But. That's a real pain. That's, I mean, please don't ask us to do that again. Nope, no, I, no, 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 we nope. will, we will. Uh, no, did. But, uh, yeah, mount, getting those fire hats in the printer and being able to get to that position without having, with having it in focus is a really tricky print. Or and also any center. interference with the print head. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, some things are easier than others. Uh, you know, as Brick Mainer viewers, viewers, you don't need to care about like how hard it was to print something. You just need to know that it's printed. But tricky, tricky, and we threw out quite a few hats in the process. Many hats sacrificed their lives to get us these hats. So, um, yeah, uh, very proud of how this figure turned out. Great little like, you know, inspect mustache. Um, you know, he's yeah. S some some firefighters get to have bigger mustaches than others, and if you're Canadian Forces, you've got restrictions, so it's tight. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it for me and the fire track. Yeah, that's all I can think of. Uh, appreciate you coming down and it's nice reviewing to have you, it. Finally, have you here in studio? I know it's and good to be back. I look forward to your next fire kit. Any any hints on what that might be? Uh, I'm not 100% certain yet. Okay. So well, it, it might be uh, waterborne fire. You never know. Okay. Interesting. So. Interesting. Okay. Time we'll, will tell. And we'll see you again.